Greetings and salutations and welcome back to our EU4 game where we are playing as Hindustan, the great Hindustan. As we are mighty. I haven't been playing this as a world conquest because it's intended to show case um, each of the mechanics and we're going through things a lot slower and trying to like conquer just massive swaths of territory to keep pace for what world conquest requires wouldn't be conducive to teaching um, beginner habits it's not playing as efficiently as that would require or as aggressively I should say And we can't actually take any of this until we've finished coring this stuff because we are heavily overextended. I think Muscat is really high development, as is Sharkia and Nizwa. So they spent a lot of time while they remained small. Rather than expanding, they were using all their points for development. And this is Muslim territory that is not Sunni, so we will try to convert it. It'll be a slow process. But we're going to try. And we will need to find a new vassal or ally once we've integrated Mongolia in for our country. I should start picking somebody out. So we could pick some small little country like Ming. Ming likes us. Would they become our vassal? We probably have some of their cores. Let's see, how many cores does Ming still have over? They've still got a lot of cores. Over a lot of territory, but they might not survive this war. So we could feed them back some of this stuff and then integrate them into our country. That's not really going to work once we get Mongolia integrated in, because then we'll have a main core ourselves and they'll view us as a you know, strategic ally, but not the appropriate overlord. We'll improve relations for now and see if they survive this war. I think Ning just wants this province. Very nice. We can't give you peace yet. I'd love to. But we got to core some stuff. I'm sure you understand. some gully. Do they get along with Ethiopia? They do. So we'll be good neighbors towards them for the moment. The way of cause to invade them. There are fellow Sunnis. Really weird that Ethiopia hasn't invaded Kaffa. Kaffa's right there on their border. It's the same religion. And has a gold mine. Also produces some coffee. You know, coffee is named after after them. So according to legend, um, coffee was discovered by an Ethiopian shepherd, I guess. Well, I'm not sure if we can call him a shepherd. That uh, would be the correct term. The formal term would be like pastoralist. 
a goat herd who had witnessed his goats eating coffee beans and then seeing the effects it had on making them hyper and, you know, slightly euphoric, I guess you could describe it as. And then, you know, tried them himself. I don't know if that's a true story, but at least that's how it's passed down. I think what we're going to do here is try signaling to Mongolia that they need to be fabricating claims. On this territory. So we mark it as being of special interest. And we set our relation to them as hostile. And that's signaling to them and the rest of the world that we have an interest in conquering this stuff. And Mongolia, being a good loyal vassal, should start dedicating one of their diplomats to fab building up a spy network and then fabricating a claim on this province. We'll probably do it on this province as well, over the lake. But there's no guarantees that Lake Baikal here uh, allows them. I'm not sure that these are considered to be adjacent over Lake Baikal. Although we could invade them just on the basis of this claim. though we've got a truce for another six years. And the city should fall soon. Ship costs reduced. Let's just check on our states. Uh, we can call a diet and get some more military power. So we're going to wait another 10 years to get our administrative points here. We could, if we spent some cash, we did both of these. We can make our ulama really loyal. Just not a pressing matter. Once we get Muscat cord, we should be able to peace out Naj. Okay, so we can take... 44 worth of stuff without going overextended. And I don't think that they're going to be worth very much. So we can see the war score that costs 8, that costs 7, and that costs 5. That's about 20 war score worth, so it should be roughly 20 overextension. Now it's half that. So we'll take their money, completely annex their country. And this isn't really valuable territory to us. So we're not going to bother dealing with revolts over it. Probably should just put down rebels here rather than increasing the autonomy. I didn't realize that they had built up these provinces quite so drastically. And now that we're at peace, we're just going to stay here for a little bit to encourage the spread of these manufactories. But we could embrace the institution as it spread to over 10% of our total development. Oh, we're dominating the spice trade. Good for us. Trade efficiency goes up. Spy detection goes down. And that's all right because by dominating the spice trade, our people are more alert. And we're more likely to find spies. We could see that. 
our country modifiers from maybe to the government tab we can see that we are trading in dyes so we have a higher chance of producing an air trading in silks we get another promote the culture trading in cotton with the dominant trade power in all three of these so our settlers if we were a colonial power would be more successful we're also trading in spices and that one as i indicated oh actually it's for spy offense by network construction i assumed it was spy defense i guess it's because we have um, spice merchants go around and they hear news and better being spies something to that effect so we just need to save up some cash and one thing that we could do since our military is such a big expense we could drop wages that we're paying to our soldiers by 50 percent by now for now and their morale will drop so if these rebels start organizing too much we'll have to start paying them again Ooh, our heir hodor is a perfectionist has to pay more for for buildings so one thing I'm going to do now that he is uh, 15 and we've got high prestige, I'm going to disinherit him. It costs us 50 prestige, but we kick him out of there. And now we will try to produce a new heir. We can check our chances of getting an heir. So we're Sunnis, that increases... So there's some sort of base chance, and we don't know exactly what percentage that is, but Sunni doubles that base chance um, because of our influence ideas that we took. It increases it by another 25%. We've got uh, three royal marriages, they increase it by 15 more percent, and we're trading in dies, so our chance altogether is the base multiplied by 1.5, or multiplied by 2.5. And Ming likes this as much as they can. They survived that war. I think we are going to ally them. They aren't yet willing to become our vassal, but they will. I have no doubt of that. Win a royal marriage? Sure. Let's take on their foreign debt. So they owe 35 ducats, which is eight loans for them. So that improves the relation by 80. So that alone is enough to get them up to plus 200 relations. And now they'll become our vassal. Okay, so they've got some cores on some other nations. Just tells us the alliance is going to break because they are they're a vassal. They can't also be our ally. And let's see who's going to be our first target to recovering those cores. Looks like Yan. Yeah, Yan's got a lot of their cores. Wu does as well. Ning has a few. Yan, why do you have the cores of our vassal? That seems rude. Let's get a general along this border. And let's move these guys up to Yan's border. So Yan's only ally is Korea. And they're fighting and losing a war against Wu. My goal here will be to kill the Korean troops as quickly as possible here. And then rampage across Yan's territory. Okay, somebody might beat us to that punch. Okay, we need a second general here, because this is a, a large army. Wow, he's garbage. 
better. So we can go here and see that this guy's just got a bonus of two and only to maneuver. So he suffers less attrition, moves a little bit more quickly across the battlefield. But we're going to fire him. We just kick them out. We're only allowed a certain number of generals. We're allowed four. I'm not going to spend that on garbage. We are declaring war over the reconquest of which one is closest to us. Uh, this one. Let's send an army to capture that as quickly as possible. And Korea didn't even come to their defense. There's a fort here, which we'll try to capture. And we can get a new royal marriage with Mongolia. Definitely want to do that because it increases chance that we get an heir. Well, there's 42. We're trying to save up some money, so why don't we raise a little bit of war taxes, which reduces our land military cost by 20%. It's that land maintenance modifier, reduces the cost of our navy by 20%. and makes more mercenaries available to us, but that's not of immediate concern. So rather than taking this stuff for ourselves, we could always give it to... Ming for Mongolia. We might want to get a really big Ming vassal. Just feed them a lot and then integrate them in. Because they'd be pretty good at defending, defending that territory. Bahadur Shah. Okay. Um, he's not great, so I'm not going to name him. He's below average, just a little bit. So I'm not going to name him after uh, a subscriber. That might be kind of mean. If somebody leaves nasty comments, <laughs> I think I should name him. Um, Name crappy rulers after him. But um, for the moment, that has fortunately not happened. Um, only comments I've had have been, you know, positive. No, no even dislikes or anything like that, which is really good. We got a nice community of V4 players. I don't make any money off of this. Um, I mean, the videos are monetized in case it actually happens to get me above the threshold you know that would be welcome so i'm doing this mostly almost entirely just out of um, you know consideration for the community as i found the videos that other people do to be helpful and people that post on the board have you know found that to be helpful I like giving a little bit back We send all the cannons from this army up to assist in the siege. Let's commit to that idea. We're going to feed back all of China that we conquer to our Ming vassal. Unfortunately, it looks like Wu's going to get a lot of this territory, including some stuff up here that we'd like to be taking from Ming. But that's not going to work out for them in the long run, let's put it that way. 
Okay, so Marathas. Having long served the various masters of the Dakan, the Marathas have perfected the guerrilla like warfare of that plateau. The growing influence of the Marathi captains in their ranks, as well as the growth of Maratha literary language, has inspired an increasing feeling of separatism in their ranks. To many, it would appear that their time is now. We could give in to the demands and give a lot of our provinces local autonomy, or we could increase the unrest in those provinces and let some cores appear. We're going to do that. So they might try raising up, but the cores do. Let me just check on Goa, which is one of these provinces, that there's now the possibility of the rebels would try to create this Maratha state, Maratha's confederacy. But they are not going to succeed. We've got a highly stable state, and if they do rise up, which they probably won't, but if they do rise up, nice, 700 ducats for free, and we would just put them down by force. In fact, we're going to relocate an army to Goa. Or somewhere around there for that exact purpose where it'd be our best base of operations. I'm checking the supply limit to see where we could support a large army. That's probably no, that's not one of the Marathas ones. Yeah, we'll probably split it up between Goa and South Konkin. And that is going to Ming. So what are they fighting over? I need to know what they're invading over. So this is a fight for to see who's going to be dominant in China. And their goals seem to be capture this red stuff. So we've taken some of it, so that's probably one reason why they haven't signed peace yet. We're just going to hold out. We don't desperately need peace for anything. It would help the spread of our institution. I can't see too many provinces around here that... would get manufactories anytime soon. Yeah, so we're just going to save up a little bit more cash and embrace it. And it gives us some sort of bonus when we do embrace it, and only will drop the tech cost. Or five percent more expensive from being five years after it spawned and not have the institution. They'll also give us ten percent more goods that are produced. So our economy will boom. Okay, so far um, the only person that has embraced it is France. We can see that they have, and England, possibly some minor powers, but how the majors. So we're the, one of the first three to get it. And I'd be interested to see what that does for our economy when we get 10% more goods produced. So we'll watch that next month. Yeah, that's welcome. Oh, hey, they 
sending an army over there to attack Ming. Uh, we don't have access to Manchu. They must have... I don't know how they got troops through there. Then. If the enemy has access, we should have access. We'll uh, demand military access of Manchu when we get over there. Okay, Manchu. It's a question of whether you're going to live or die. Are you going to give us military access? You would. Good. You have chosen wisely. Okay, still six years ahead of time, military tech, so we might as well get quality ideas again. And now all of our navies will fight 10% more fiercely. I like that. Royal Heretic. So our people could get upset over the faith of our queen. So she's from she's from Ayutthaya. And our people are upset because of this, she's from Ayutthaya. She follows the official faith of Ayutthaya, which is Theravadan Buddhism. But we can just tell them to get over it and have unrest in our country for the next 10 years, or we could attempt to divorce her, which strangely would upset the Ottomans rather than Ayutthaya. That's got to be an error. That's a bug. And then we would have to get a primary consort from our ruler's other spouses. By the way, he has more than one wife. He's a more Sunni. So we will tell our public that they are not welcome to an opinion on that matter. So where are you going? Now we are fighting in mountains here, so this is not ideal terrain. But they will not survive the encounter. Retreating down into Korea. That's strange. We don't have access to Korea. I'm not sure if Korea gave them military access to move through it. They, we should have the right to move through. Let's try to find... Oh, don't think you can escape. I'm not done with you. We'll catch him here. It's woods, so it's less bad than the mountains. But those rolls aren't helping us. There we are. Let's chase him down south again, see if we can find them and kill them. We get our first trade idea, but I do want to get caught up on diplomatic technology. We want more war taxes. I don't think that's essential. We just wanted to save up some cash from bracing the institution. And Yan is offering us peace, but that's just not going to happen. We're going to dictate terms to them. I've escaped. Now our guy has a lot of, a lot of maneuvers, so he's pretty quick. So we could drop the speed down and maneuver a little bit more ably. Okay, so there's a problem in our economy. Sorry, in our army that uh, we don't have as many recruits as we could have. We could start hiring people who aren't Sunni to populate our army. We'd lose piety but gain manpower. We're only 10,000 away from our cap, so now we're going to increase our piety. Sadly, um, troops are going to have a little bit of trouble catching up with them. But 
this should be pretty fatal for them. Wouldn't be surprised if this ends their army. Yeah. Okay, so they ended that war with Wu. So now we can try snatching up some other territory, which is really great news. Let's head up to Jiram. And once our troops are out of Korea, we could stop paying for this military access. Because that does cost us a diplo relation slot. Cancel that. And we no longer need access in Manchuria. We're going to cancel that access. And we're going to give this to Ming. Okay, we've seen this tons of times. We want autonomy. No, we're going to try bring down our inflation. I hadn't seen that one in a while. But the fact that we have some gold. Let's split up this territory. And to reward Mongolia with a few things as well as this is the Mongolian region. Ooh, Manchu beat up Buryadia. Okay, there's something that they have that we don't have. It's this fort over there. Let's ask them if they're ready to accept peace. Taking anything more than that would be over a hundred war scores, so let's uh, clear this offer. We're going to start with the things that wouldn't give Ming any overextension, i.e. their cores. So that's a start. That will make the best borders, so we have to take that, and we want that. They wouldn't accept this offer yet. So we're going to have to take this fort. That's our call. And now they have no option to refuse. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this fort though. What would we have to give up? Uh, Tian Shui, but then that would make them unable to core this stuff. How about Luan? No, that's not sufficient. Yeah, we'll let them keep that fort for now. This will be our peace deal. Okay, so Ming is bigger, a little bit more powerful, and very appreciative of our efforts on their behalf. What's their liberty desire? Zero. Mongolia is a little tougher, our relations aren't quite as good. But we're integrating them into our country, so that's not a problem. Now let's see how long this video has been going on. 33 minutes, so I am going to stop there.